In this video, we will first illustrate the principle of the ANCOVAR, the analysis of covariance, by using Excel and a limited data set. And then later we will use Minitab for a more complex analysis. Starting with Excel, the graph shows the percentage transmission as a function of wavelength for two inks, A and B. And we wish to test whether there is a difference in transmission between these two inks. The transmission values are given in column C in rows 3 to 5 for ink A and rows 6 to 9 for ink B. To start with, we can perform a two sample t test to see if there is a significant difference between the median values of these raw transmission values. So in C11, we will enter the request for the t test function, which will requires the two data arrays, the number of tails, so we have a two tailed test, and we will assume equal variance, so we will enter two in this position in the argument, and we will get a p value of 0.432. In this case, the test has been unable to detect a significant difference in transmission because both samples include a large variation between the values due to the differences in wavelength. And the t-test interprets this large variation as purely random variations in the data. And in this test, the difference in transmission values between the inks is too small to be detected when compared to this covariate variation due to the wavelength. However, we can see from the graph that ink A does appear to have higher transmission values than ink B. And we can now detect this difference by correcting for the covariate variation of transmission with wavelength. First of all, we derive the best fit straight line through this data. And in this simple example, we will include all the data values together. So we will calculate the slope of the best fit line in G4. So that's equals slope and the known Y values and the known X values, which are the wavelength. Similarly, we can calculate the intercept for this best fit straight line. And this best fit straight line can then be drawn as the trend line in this data, in which we can see that the A values are generally above the trend line and the B values are generally below. So to quantify this difference, we will calculate the best fit values corresponding to each measurement. And to do this, we will use the equation of the straight line. So the best fit value for transmittance at a wavelength of 698 is equal to the slope of the best fit straight line multiplied by the value of the wavelength and then plus the intercept value, giving a value of 43.98. We will copy this equation to the other cells, but to do that we must lock the row values of the slope and the intercept by putting dollar signs in front copying this calculation down, we get all of the best fit values for each of these wavelengths. We can then measure the value of the residual between the experimental value and the best fit value at that wavelength, which is quite simply equal to the difference between the measured value and the best fit value, giving a residual of 3.18 for the first of the A data points. Copying that formula down, we can now carry out a two sample t test to test for a significant difference in these residuals. Sample A, sample B. Again, it's two tailed, and we assume equal variance, giving a p value of 0 0.001 for the difference between the residuals. So this now shows a significant difference between the two inks. And so by correcting for the variation due to the wavelength, the residuals now show a significant difference between the two inks. 
we can now use Minitab to perform an, a similar Ankovar analysis for the difference between three inks. This data shows the percentage transmission recorded for three different inks A, B and C using a spectrophotometer at different wavelengths. The aim of the analysis is to see if there is a significant difference in transmission between the three inks A, B and C, but because the transmission for all inks varies approximately linearly with wavelength, then the wavelength is a covariate in this particular analysis. So to perform the ANCOVAR analysis, we go to STAT, ANOVAR, General Linear Model, and we must fit the General Linear Model. The response is indeed the transmission. The factor is the ink. And the covariate, in this case, is the wavelength. And we run the analysis and the result appears in the session window where we see the standard analysis of variance table giving us p-values for both the ink factor and the wavelength covariate of values of less than 0 0.0005 which tells us that the transmission was dependent on the wavelength which we already knew as a covariate, but that also there was a significant difference between at least two of the three inks. We can see further information within this data in that we can see that it has plotted the regression equations for each of the three inks. And we see that in these three equations, the percentage transmission varies with wavelength with the same slope in all three cases but with a different constant value. So there appears to be different constants in these equations for the three inks but we must perform a comparisons test to see which of these differences might be significant. So we go to STAT, ANOVAR, General Linear Model and we see that we can now perform a comparisons test. The response is the percent transmission. And under types of comparison, we could either do comparisons between all possible pairs, or we could compare each of them with a control. But we have no specific control in this problem. So we will stick with the default pairwise comparison between all possible pairs of inks. We will stick with the two key test and we must just confirm that we wish to compare the different inks. So we will click on the ink factor and we wish to compare levels for this item. And we can see that a C has appeared next to ink. And then under results, we request grouping information, but also we'll request tests and confidence intervals between the different pairs of data. OK. And we can then run the analysis for comparisons. Each of these intervals here represents the confidence interval of the value of the difference between different pairs of inks. So taking this lower one, this records the confidence interval for the difference between ink B and ink C. So we see that the confidence interval for the difference between C and B is somewhere between about minus two and about plus 0.3. But the important point here is that that confidence interval range includes the possibility that the difference could be zero. So this is telling us 
that it is possible that the difference between C and B is actually zero, i.e. there is no difference. So we cannot be sure that ink C and B are significantly different. However, if we look for inks B and A, the confidence interval for their difference is somewhere between minus 4 and minus 6. And 0 does not appear within that range, so we, so we can be confident that the difference between A and B is definitely not 0. There is a significant difference. Similarly, there is a significant difference between C and A. So this graphical representation tells us that there is a difference between A and B and between A and C, but not necessarily a difference between B and C. We will be able to see the same information numerically in that the actual values of the confidence intervals are calculated in this lower table and it calculates a p-value for a test as to whether that difference is significant. So between B and A, the p-value is less than 0 0.0005, very significant. So we can accept there is a difference between B and A and a difference between C and A, but with a p-value of 0.115, there is not a significant difference between B and C, as we found before. An alternative way in which this is presented is by grouping information where the different levels of the factor, i.e. the different inks, are allocated different letters. And if the means do not share a letter, then they are significantly different. So A is in group A, and B and C are both given group B. So from this we can infer that A is significantly different from B, and that A is significantly different from C. But B and C are not significantly different. Again, ag agreeing with the confidence interval information.